guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled Renting a Lovely House, but my landlord is entitled and intrusive and lives nearby unfortunately. I, female 50, rent a lovely house in the countryside in the northeast of Scotland. It's just right for me. I'm the happiest I've ever been here. This is both due to location and the fact that this is the first home I've made for myself after my marriage ended. My ex is a lovely guy but messy and moody, which made living with him stressful. Having my own clean space without a grumpy man hanging about is very restful. It would be perfect if it wasn't for my landlord, Malcolm Male 66. He has inserted himself into my space in intrusive ways and then blamed me. Which is incredibly frustrating. Two weeks after moving in, two years ago, his dogs came into my garden and savaged my cat. I heard the cries of my senior rescue cat, Sally who was 12 at the time, and barking and went out to the garden to find her defending herself against three dogs. My landlord was on a pushbike shouting at them ineffectually. I rescued my girl and shouted at my landlord to control his dogs. His response was to say it was my fault. To say he'd told me that his dogs couldn't be trusted around cats. This is true. Soon after moving in, I saw him going by. The property is on a farm that he owns and works. We said hello and he came and spoke to me. He asked me about my cat. I had stated on my application form I filled in that I had a cat that I allowed out. One of the reasons I wanted a countryside location was to give her some relatively safe freedom. I thought that having been open about this and that he agreed to rent to me this wouldn't be an issue. Malcolm mentioned he had three dogs. They weren't to be trusted around cats, and he gave me a old gate post to put under my side gate. I wasn't entirely sure what this was for. To keep the dogs out? He then left. After the attack on my cat he referenced this conversation. He believed that the old wooden post under the gate was going to effectively keep my cat in my back garden. That when his dog saw her sleeping in my front garden and attacked her that it was my fault for allowing her out of the back garden. I wasn't aware that this was the agreement. Or that he'd bring his dogs off the lead on a regular basis past my home. Knowing they would attack my cat if they saw her. I took her to the emergency vet. She was bitten pretty bad on her back end. Several puncture wounds around her bum. I paid out of pocket and billed Malcolm. He paid but insisted I should have kept Sally in the back garden, and he wasn't to blame. But he'd pay the bill as a gesture of goodwill. But that I should have kept Sally in the back garden. I tried to imagine the type of fencing I'd need to keep my cat only in the back garden. It would have to be prison-like. Cats, being liquid, are difficult to contain. An old wooden post under a five-foot gate wasn't going to cut it. But to him that was his responsibility discharged. Anything that happened after that was on me apparently. Unfortunately, one of the bite wounds on Sally got infected. I took her back to the vet. Paid for it out of pocket again and billed Malcolm. He refused to pay. Said that, one vet visit should have been enough, and, when will it end? When she's better Malcolm. When the bite wounds inflicted on her by your dogs have healed. Seemed simple to me. Eventually I got him to pay by threatening to go the local paper. I was not going to be left out of pocket by this man. Another issue that has brought this unpleasant man into my life was the toilets which blocked regularly. Very stressful. And he compounded it by blaming me of course. Apparently, I was flushing wipes. Despite me not flushing wipes he just insisted that was the issue. It was insane. He was incredibly rude about it. Complaining about how much he'd spent and saying, the professional saw evidence of wipes. Case closed according to him. But no wipes were flushed by me. Why would I inconvenience myself? Made zero sense. The toilets continued to regularly block over the last two years. Then recently it was discovered that one section of the drainage to the septic tank was choked with roots. That it was this that was causing the intermittent blockage. I expected an apology from Malcolm. No such luck. Instead, he switched tack and started complaining about my garden being overgrown. Which is true. The garden is big and complicated. The previous tenant had planted lots of plants and there was also a large laurel bush and mature trees. It didn't look well tended but I quite liked it natural. At the time I thought he was just switching tack to re-establish dominance. 
but I later realized he linked the unkempt lawn and overgrown laurel bush to the roots blocking the drainage pipe. So, he could still blame me. The overgrown garden became an issue. I wasn't entirely unsympathetic. Fair enough. I was struggling to keep up with the maintenance of the garden. At the time I didn't realize it was linked to the drainage. But the issue was still valid. I agreed to a 50 pounds increase in my rent and gardeners would come and sort out the garden. Seemed perfectly reasonable. But instead of a tidy up it was a complete hatchet job. The garden, once leafy and private became an exposed and barren wasteland. No consultation with me at all. A professional gardener and tree surgeon came in and hacked everything down. All the bushes and trees cut down to just the main trucks. It wasn't, isn't, pretty. I had some discussion with the gardener. He hadn't realized that an increase in my rent was paying for this. That Malcolm has instructed they do this. The tree surgeon wouldn't talk with me and seemed to be very unfriendly. I wasn't sure why. They were just about to start on the last tree standing. A gorgeous birch tree. I asked the tree surgeon what were the benefits of cutting it back. He started talking to me with such condescension. I asked, what's with the tone? The conversation turns combative when he started to give me a hard time for not maintaining the garden. Why was he upset about it? He'd got a job out of it. I said as much and he flipped. Called me a witch and tried to attack me. Held back by the gardener. Who ordered him away. Surreal. I think Malcolm bitched about me to this man. Opening the door to this abusive and violent confrontation by a man who clearly had pre-existing issues. So, I'm now trying to consolidate my control of this situation. I've written to the letting agent. Asking for reassurances that my landlord will abide by the terms of the contract and human decency and just leave me alone. Here's hoping. Next one is titled, Apparently, I can't live in this apartment building because my weight is over the limit. Backstory. Pretty much my whole life, my weight was a bit over than most people, but I'm living my life as best as I can and I'm happy. I admit I should lose a few, but still. I'm 22 male and I'm living on my own in a nice apartment building. There are three ways to get into the building, all in a single door. Either physical key, code, entered in keypad, or a special NFC key fob. If you are a resident, you can get in easily. Important for later. Story. This happened about three hours ago. I'm trying to get in the building but have trouble finding my key fob. So I just started typing my code, six digits, and just before I do that, a Karen appears behind me and goes. Karen. What do you think you're doing? Me. Huh? Oh, I'm trying, got cut off. Karen. Oh, you're the pizza boy. Whose apartment are you trying to reach? Me. What? No? I'm trying to get home, I live here. Karen. That's impossible, people like you are not allowed in this building. Me. Wait, what do you mean, people like me? Karen. You know, fat pigs, they're not allowed in this building. Me. They most certainly are since I lived here for the past three years. Karen. Well, I've never seen you before, so you don't, I know everyone. Me. Um, I don't think so, if you excuse me, I'm tired and I'm trying to get home. Goodbye. Karen. Uh no, you're not going into this building fat thief. Even if you live here, I know the house manager, a nice guy who we pay for everything in the building, maintenance, elevator costs, electricity, etc. And I'm sure he won't appreciate the fact that such a pig lives here, I'll tell him to kick you out. Me. Haha. <laughs> Karen. What's so funny, aren't you scared that you're going to be evicted? And smirk on her face like she thought she defeated me. Me. No, not at all, listen now. First for the house manager to evict me, at least 75% of the people in the building must sign a petition and I know that most of the people like me and we are friends. Second, I have 6 months left on my lease, before I renew it, I'm on rent, on saving mode, and the landlord cannot kick me before it expires, and if they do I can sue them for a lot more than the rent itself. Okay, Karen. Uh, none of these matters when they see your obesity. Such people shouldn't be allowed in this neighborhood. Me. I get that as a no, bye. Karen. No, you can't. And I just entered the building making sure I closed the door after entering. Then I noticed through the stairway's window that the same Karen going into the building opposite of the one I live in. Apparently she was bored and tried to mess with me. Moral. Chubby people, do not equal, thieves, or, delivery people. Also know the laws before saying anything like that. Next one is titled. Apparently my, friend, owns an entire city. 
I planned a trip to a particular tourist-friendly city I really like visiting because of the history and number of things to do while there. I know someone who lives in the area, and when I mentioned I was planning to spend a few days there it was suggested that I stay in her guest room to save on hotel costs. This friend has some mental health issues, mainly undiagnosed bipolar, I suspect, but diagnosed depression and anxiety, and can be a little flaky, so I didn't cancel my reservation at the hotel as I didn't prepay and could cancel later. I didn't tell her that though. Fast forward to a week before the trip and she tells me she's not feeling mentally able to have someone stay with her, she's feeling anxious, so she wants to be alone, and tells me not to come. I took that to mean I couldn't stay with her, which was fine. I still had my hotel reservation and since it was in the city center, it would be more convenient location-wise anyway. I fly into the city and get an Uber to my hotel, then get settled. I texted her and asked how she was feeling that day. She said she was okay and not feeling very anxious that particular day. So, I texted back, that's great. I'm glad you're having a good day. Do you feel like going to get dinner tonight? If not, that's alright. I thought it would be nice to catch up while I'm here, but I understand if you don't feel up to it. Just let me know. A few minutes later she calls me and immediately starts screaming, shrieking at me that she had told me not to come, and I had no right to be there or to put her in the position of having to entertain when she doesn't want to. I calmly told her I didn't expect her to entertain me at all if she didn't want to, and that I was perfectly happy to explore by myself each day and relax in my hotel every night. No obligation for her to even see me if she didn't want to. She yelled at me again that I was a horrible person for invading her privacy and coming to the city when she told me not to. I responded that whether or not I stayed with her or even saw her wasn't a factor in my decision to visit the city for a long weekend. I was in a hotel and happy to be there so I could come and go as I please. She's now, doing some thinking, about our friendship and deciding whether she can remain friends with someone who goes against her wishes like that. Yeah, I don't think she really needs to put much thought into that because I'm done with the friendship myself. I don't need a, friend, who tries to act like she can keep a person from visiting a tourist heavy city just because she doesn't want to see them, or anyone else. The entitlement she's shown is pretty alarming even taking into account her mental health issues. Expecting someone to a cancel a trip they planned without you being a factor, wow. Next one is titled, Entitled People Parks at a Gas Pump and Goes Shopping. Earlier today I was at a supermarket with a gas station and decided I needed to get some gas. For some reason only half the pumps are working, and the lines are so long it snakes into the parking lot. Everything is going smoothly, but it's a long process. I park pretty far away from the pump and there's a car a little ahead of me. The passengers get out of the car and go into the store. I'm like, haha smart. Killing two birds with one stone. The line gets shorter and shorter and the passengers still aren't back. Finally, it's the car's turn and I'm three cars behind him. He gets out of his car, gets gas, finishes and in my mind he's gonna move ahead to allow us to proceed this long process but no. He puts his nozzle back on the machine and has the audacity to sit there and wait for his passengers. We're waiting for five minutes like this. Until the honking comes. Everyone is honking at him to move forward. People behind him including me roll down our windows and berate him but he isn't budging even though the spot in front of him is available but unusable for us. If he just pulled up then we can all move on. People start coming out of their cars and begin yelling at him to move. It's been 15 minutes and he hasn't nudged an inch. Finally, his kids get there and he loads up his truck and leaves. Last one is titled, Dude comes to quiet lake in HOA, entitled, but not too bright. Lovely sunny afternoon at the beach in Arkansas. HOA keeps the lake clean and a great sandy area surrounded by buoys for swimmer safety. Huge beach, wife and I there about 10 minutes and the entitled Jack and friend get out and sit at table right next to ours on a beach with dozens of tables and only about 5 people. His unleashed dog starts running around, and he places his boombox down as he lights a cigarette, all three activities prohibited as listed on the sign he parked in front of. I thought it was a hoax, prank and start looking around for cameras, no such luck and the quiet day is spoiled by this ninny. Paddled farther away, but his tunes were noisy. After 20 minutes or so, two minivans arrived and people getting out must have spooked the fool, he ran to his car, leaving promptly, without his nice shirt or ray bands. I found some treasure that his dog left behind and picked it up with the shirt he left behind, all into the trash. The Ray Bands look good on me though. Thanks for listening.